found it's finding yeah. what um, oh, their actually. heightened interest is yeah. because but it's yeah it's, I it's understand what you're interest. saying what you need yeah. to do is you need to go into their special area of interest yeah and then they'll allow you in their world and that's when you can journey with them on the journey with them and then the sensory issues wow so that's also been mentioned already so you have uh, students with autism that are over uh, get overstimulated I don't know if that's the right word but a light a noise something that we don't necessarily mm. hear mm. can drive them because yeah. they can respond to that stimulus. Can you hear it? Yeah. No. No, no, no. We don't hear it. Yeah. You have to figure out what it is. Is it the air conditioner? Is it and place them in the again from a teacher point of view in a classroom away from that. It is not. They are not just being rude. They're not just wanting their own way. They don't want to just sit with their friends. There is something that bothers them, and it would be something sensory. Um, some students have um, or under, would that be the word, sensory problems. So they often need, have the need to sort of position themselves. The only way um, that I could understand it when it was explained to me was they sometimes feel like a balloon and you let the air out and they're just everywhere. Mm, so mm, to mm. find a place, they do something, they stamp their feet or... Um, I've got one in my class at the moment who puts his finger up his nose all the time and it's not because he doesn't have the social skills it's 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 telling him this is where I'm this is where I'm at this is my balance this is my point in class it's very strange but it is um, I will get to that a bit later oh, there's a word for it each of these can be represented centering centering yes yes but what they do oh here's the next one what is this guy doing? He's doing this. Yeah. All right. So do you know the word for this? What some uh, some people with autism do? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I can't think of it. Can't think, think of it right now. No. Sure. Stimming. Stimming. Okay. Stimming comes from the word stimulation. So they'll be doing stimming to block excess sensory overload. So to block that air conditioner or that noise that we don't hear, but it just drives them batty. They could be. Clapping hands, flapping hands, walking in circles oftentimes. My son used to do this one. There you go, stimming. Yeah. All right. Or it could provide them with extra sensory stimulus when needed. I know that some um, children like a, a heavy blanket or something heavy on them for that um, extra sensory stimulus. Yeah. It helps them soothe anxiety. Mm -hmm. So it's, it makes them feel comfortable. It's comforting. It's soothing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, observable behavior, when a child from, let's say, between one, two, three, does something like that, you might want to ask yourself, do I need to go for a diagnosis because um, this person is stimming. Right then, already, you've already mentioned this, I'm really impressed with this group. Um, they are related conditions. Now, then, then you have a child with autism, and something else. It is not necessarily part of the autism, but it's just interesting that it's often, there's often a link. Um, the low intelligence, not always there, but it can be there. Seizures, allergies, the gut problems. Now the gut problems, um, the lecturer said, and I think she might be right, could also be linked to the anxiety. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, and the sleep problems as well. Sleep deprivation? Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and it must be anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be anxiety. Then there's the PICA. I have not come across a student with PICA. I'm thinking maybe in the lower. PICA is um, also a mineral deficiency. It could be. It is. It, it's oh, there you go. by mineral deficiency. Mm -hmm. So I know that when grown ups do that, um, maybe it's a pregnant lady and there's a deficiency that yeah. she needs. So it could be the same with children then, and you say it is, and yeah. I will definitely no, I'm a nutritionist that. and we There you go, <laughs> there you go, thank you for that. The low muscle tone, again, it is not part of autism, um, but sometimes there is, it is related, uh, sometimes it's a related condition. I watched something on 60 Minutes. Yes. Um, there was this lady in Melbourne, she was teaching all autistic children piano. Yeah, oh, thank you, wow. Mother. That, and I reckon music therapy does really mm. good for them. Mm. Wow. Sure. Yep. 
totally off topic. Would yeah, like, be, yeah, would that be soothing? Okay, yes. My, my kids are interested in, um, they're both working towards uh, opening a theatre company, right? That's their goal. But one of the things they want to do, because we have family members that have autistic children, and they can never take their kids anywhere. So my kids, when they open their theatre company, are actually going to have autistic sessions where parents can just bring their autistic children and they'll have a full on normal performance. Yeah. But just for special needs. Absolutely kids, fantastic. They miss out on I'm sorry and, and to take exactly. you off that, but I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd bring that up for those that. Yeah, and they love yeah. The music. Yeah, yeah the music. No, it's 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 really good. And um, these might not be evidence based practices, but if they're good, they don't they're not harmful yeah, to sure. the child. No, then they can still not. do it. Yeah. So um, I just want to maybe take that one step step further and say maybe um, sort of drama classes for the mm. autistic ones, especially with modelling um, social behaviour. Mm. You know, who am I? How are you? Let's play with this toy. You know. Um, modeling the behavior that they can then can open up a, 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 a new friend or a social world for them. Yeah, and also um, the, the feelings identification. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, like that, this new movie helpful. that's out, out now with the, I haven't seen it, but I've seen the trailer, the different um, emotions are people. It's inside sad out. and Is it inside yeah. out? Yeah. It's out of my but Yes, it's now it's showing. I haven't seen it, but I've seen the trailer. and. M um, actually having those emo Ooh, emotions role model, I think that's fantastic. I'd like what to a fantastic it, idea. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It is. Because, Sonia, um, do you think allergies, which allergy, is it physical or mental allergies? Oh, wow. Um, it's physical. Physical. Um, the reason why I'm saying wow is because, I don't know if allergies might even have a mental cause and then f manifest physically. I don't know. Yeah. But um, certainly, I have a student in my class at the moment with autism, um, high functioning, and he's very, very al allergic to peanuts. Yeah. Um, in such a way that he's got an epi allergic to peanuts. Oh, right. So anaphylactic. Anaphylactic. That's yeah. right. Mm. And he's got an epipen with him all the time. Yeah. And so the two, um, the two diagnoses are separate, but right. somehow. Oftentimes, these are related conditions when Sometimes you get to allergies um, become related to anxiety because when a person becomes over anxiety, they have a high anxious. Anxiety. Look, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I, I think, think we are more linked than yeah. you know. Things are more linked than we want to That's acknowledge. We want to put it in certain isolated blocks. Yeah, and then here the hearing and visual impairment that um, you mentioned earlier. Can I, sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, the low muscle tone, can you talk a bit about that? I've never heard that one before. Um, holding a pen, catching a ball, um, yeah, closing a button. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, sometimes manifest in the way of walking. This, this guy that I said is, is that I'm talking about now that is um, high functioning, peanut allergic. He walks in a different way, he walks different. And he runs different. Um, so that's got something to do with low muscle tone. Is that more of a flailing run? Sometimes it is, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. My brother has um, a bit of a flailing. He's, he's high too. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
child. Then um, several of the following may be early indicators of ASD. Inexplicable tantrums, unusual interests or attachments, unusual motor mo movements such as flapping hands or spinning, extreme difficulty coping with change. And that doesn't change. Yes. So even if the student is much older <laughs> and they go from progress from one class to another, move from one house to another, from one tertiary institution to another, it is always the people close to them's responsibility, challenge I'd rather say, to familiarize them you go with the environment. It, the very environment much so, too. very mm. much so. Take them there beforehand, show them photos, walk them through, talk them through. And Change make it exciting. Hard. And make it exciting. Yes, 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 this yes. is going to be so yes. much fun. We're going to do this a new adventure. <laughs> it's almost like you've got to plant those seeds. Yes, yes. So, and plan and plan. Yeah, and, plan. and because of the anxiety, they're thinking, oh, I'm not going to cope. Yeah. And, and it's like, and I'm not going to okay. to go. I'm not going to yet. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be fine. You're going to find new friends and you've got to bring up evidence of that in the past. And, and, yeah, and change is hard be, for everybody. I mean, yeah, nobody's really comfortable with change. But it's extra hard, really extra hard, with people on the ASD. Okay, sensory, afraid of some everyday sounds. Um, so you don't go to a person with ASD and surprise them or touch them on the shoulder or jump on their backs like some of these teenage boys do these days. They just oh, really? Don't do that. It just <laughs> and they get angry. Them, like, yeah. 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 And, and they'll respond in, in a very angry way and the other student will say, I was just joking. Well, it is not a joke to them. It is really a No, um, because they can't see it that way. Exactly. Yeah. A peripheral vision to look at objects. I have not seen that before, only on YouTube, but they tend to look at something like from the corner of the eye. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Very interesting. Fascination with moving objects. Can look at it all the time. Um, a high tolerance of temperature and pain could be an indicator. Mm -hmm. Not responding to his or her name, very good indicator, not pointing or waving, loss of words previously used, which we've spoken about earlier, absence of speech, no spontaneous phrases, selective hearing, responsive to certain sounds but not the human voice. Oh, okay. Um, and then unusual language patterns, which um, they say a repetitive speech, which is called echolalia, and they'll often repeat something that they'll hear on the TV or in a movie, it could be three, four, or five words, and the, and the mom could be uh, very happy because it's it sounds like a sentence, you know, but it's it's something is he or she has heard somewhere or they could say and is repeating. Sorry, yes. um, like they could say to the mother, oh, you know, learn that song from um, I don't know the Ed Sheeran guy. I can't think of the yeah, name yeah, of yeah, the song Sheeran, now, yeah. um, but I can't think of the name of the song. I'm good at music, but I just can't think of the song right now. Yeah, and then repeating the the words. Looks away when you speak to him or her, does not return your smile, lack of interest in other children, often mm -hmm. seems to be in his or own world, auto, mm -hmm. autos, mm -hmm. does not seek to share interests with others. Do they ever have different social skills to different people, like they might treat their mum differently yes. to like they treat yes. everyone else? Yes. Um, you, may, you may find that um, they, an autistic, a specific child, oh, they're so different. But you might find that an ind individual is very affectionate to his mom and nobody else. Yeah. That can happen. Why is that? Um, why is that? Because I know it's a complex question, but... It is. <laughs> so <laughs> how, am I, how am I going to unpack that question? Can <laughs> um, I just say, yes. my daughter was never ever affectionate to me at all. Mm. It's only been the last six months how? that she's actually started to show affection. How fantastic. Um, that is the general story. And when I say story is when you read the what people say, generally, and it is and it is a problem for the parents. And, and it's not because the child doesn't love you. It's just that they don't show affection. They just don't. Yeah. Or show it in a different way. They don't know that they need to or have to. They or, don't know. And yeah. the same with facial gestures, the same with... Eye it's contact and body language. Absolutely. And, and also figurative language, like um, if, if you're sarcastic. Um, they don't get it at all. And, and oftentimes it's a problem. Um, one teacher of a year four class said to his students, um, at night when you do your homework, do this, this and that. And the, and the um, autistic child went home and, um, and, and said to his mom, he cannot do his homework during the day. 
because the teacher said at night when you do your homework. Yeah, that's right. But the right. teacher didn't mean it's when it's literal. dark. He took it literally. You yeah, see, that's the thing. thing. It's the literal yeah. thing. Very, yeah. very literal. Be very careful because they did they take you very literally. Mm. Um, there's the lining up of toys. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. that could be a mm -hmm. sign. They play with their toys, but they play with it differently, which is just what we've read before. Um, oftentimes, it's the lining up of the trucks or the cars or that, and the mothers are smiling, mm -hmm. they see what's happening here. I just thought that's such a cute photo, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not allowed to change it at all? Yes. Yes, yes. So you can imagine what kind of problems that brings in, in a daycare centre or when there are other students. Mm -hmm. Lego. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mine's Lego. Okay. But also, too, it can um, manifest in completely unstructured. Just running around? Yeah, just running around. Wow. Um, treatment. So we're looking at long-standing, evidence-based, scientifically-based approaches. We're looking at what the best practices are. Um, and then what is, and you can also obviously try what is good and not necessarily harmful, like we've mentioned dogs and music, and it's not on the EBP list, but it's not going to do harm, so it might, it might work. Um, the applied behavior analysis is basically the one that's been proven over and over again to help with autism, and it, it actually targets the behavior. And we look at ABC, what causes, let's say there's a tantrum, what will cause it? Let's see if we can get that out of the way. As we spoke about earlier, the sensory overload, do we have the air conditioner out of the way? Do we have the correct lights in the class? Could we try and prevent a, a, you know, a meltdown? Then we look at the actual behavior, and then we look at the consequence, because oftentimes uh, uh, these professionals will come in and they will see that the consequence of our behavior um, punishment. Let's say we punish the child for something that he's done wrong and they don't even want the word punishment to be used. No, because they don't want it. No. <laughs> um, but let's say it is to send the child out of the class. Well, he's going to do it all the time because he wants to be out of the class. Yeah, it's noisy right. in the class. <laughs> right. That's right. So, yeah. so these, this is what these people look at. What, what is he, why is a child doing this? What is he getting out of it? What can we do to prevent it? Um, and oftentimes we're looking at crisis management plans and safety first because sometimes it manifests in a way that is actually dangerous mm -hmm. to himself or the people around him. Um, so if you have a specific behavior a problem that needs to be targeted and it's just not, you know, you're just not coping, I would say bring in an ABA um, professionalist, professional, um, because that is the one thing that has been proven over time to work. So, Applied Behaviour Analysis? Yes, ABA. I'm just going to text that right now. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Do that immediately. All right, and then um, myths. It's a myth. It's not the mother's fault. It cannot be cured. They are not all savants. You know, Rain Man? I think the, yeah, the, the movie Rain Man. I've seen the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, well, that movie, I think, brought the whole idea of autism to... to become not popular but more common, more known term. Um, it's actually very, a small number of people with autism that are a very, very gifted in a specific area. I can't but think of the guy's name that was in it. Dustin? Dustin Hoffman, that's, yeah. yeah. that's you. Yeah. Um, Tom Cruise is a good parent. Yeah. And Tom Cruise. Yeah. It was a very, very good movie. Um, you might find that they've got um, strengths and across the spectrum they've got strengths and weaknesses and their strength might be Memory. not not savant level but very good very hard um, for instance that student that I was talking about earlier is uh, he gets the highest in math every year level every every year um, so he's very good at math. Is it hot in here or is it just It is hot. It is hot in here. <laughs> um, there's another there's another uh, myth, people with autism don't want friends, they do want friends, they want to socialize, they have emotions. It's just for them to to unlock that, they don't know how to, express to make it. friends, how to express it, how to go about it, and so they can be taught. It is an excuse they for They want to stay in that cage. It looks like they want to, but they don't really want yeah. to. Yeah. They need, they need to be taught it's to not the truth. It's yeah. not the it's truth, not the but truth. That, yes. that's how they are. Yes, that's a myth. Um, it is an excuse for bad behavior. I don't agree. Um, you often, 
you know, you, I don't know, there's so many stories out there about people that have an autistic child, take the child with them to go shopping, the child has a meltdown and then other people judge them, look at them, stare at them, have something to say, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, enough. yeah, I've, I've, I've given those people attitude back. Yeah, and well, said, do it. Know, the child had, has autism. Where's yeah. your understanding? My child has autism. I'm seeing from the autistic society, they end up having to give you... I can't remember the exact words, but it was beautiful. It was about the child to this person. Yeah. You do not know me. You, you know, That's all right. This and that. That's and right. explained a little bit of what I have and at the end this. Yeah, just, yeah. just people that say, oh, you know, each child just needs a good flogging. Yeah, yeah. Please, that is man. total garbage. And it doesn't help. Yeah. It doesn't help anybody. So just you can all just be aware of the fact that when, you know, you see um, a meltdown, maybe ask the mom, can I help you? Is he having a meltdown? What can I do? And not just judging because it's probably not just bad behavior. Um, and then the other thing that we must please keep in mind is that they, uh, people on the autism spectrum often struggle to make eye contact. Yeah. Now, some of them can be taught. They're taught to do it through, uh, you know, um, ABA um, professionals, and there are certain ways that you can teach a child to make eye contact. But, but for some students, or for some children, or persons, people, it's painful, it is painful. It is painful, they can't. So it is not that they are rude, it is because it gives them pain <laughs> that they don't do that. They pain. can't do it. Yeah, I don't understand that, but it's a, it could be a sensory thing. How to speak to a person with ISD, ASD? Well, don't expect eye contact. Try to use literal language, which we've spoken about already. Focus yeah. on their area of interest. Mm -hmm. Don't expect them to read your body language or tone of voice. They gain their trust. In trust. You, you, you have to, you have to. Yeah. Don't shout or, uh, at the person or surprise the person. Don't shout at the person unexpectedly. Mm. Mm. And don't touch the person without warning. I, we, um, I work with the teacher yes. in the Territory because the, uh, the girls were brought up in the Territory. Oh, yeah. And they are so far advanced with this. Oh, that's fantastic. That they're, that they're amazing. Yeah. And I work with them. So it's great listening yeah. to all of you and here yeah. now is because I've forgotten yeah some of the hard stuff I went through that because I had the support from the teacher. Yeah. We had we supported one another. And can you, you know? can you think how wonderful it would be if everybody could just be aware of this? Yes. You know? And there's more awareness about it. So it that, it that is becoming easier. more it's not yeah. it's not enough. Yeah. But we, we get yeah. yeah. I'm sure we're getting we're getting there slowly. But it's not only that, it's like I remember when I told my dad he yelled at me. Yes? Why? Why? Pardon? Um but Dad yelled at her when she told me. No, Dad yelled at me. Yeah. When Dad I told him, him that his youngest grandson had autism. What is it that he... Mm. He couldn't cope with it. He yeah. didn't know what autism was, as far as he was concerned. It's just the whole yeah. understanding. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, just, uh, just needs to have the knowledge. Yeah. Right, so some of these people have been um, <laughs> diagnosed with ASD. Some have just shown the signs. Interesting. Mm. Artists, musicians, the animal scientists I've spoken about. There's actually, she actually made a, uh, there's a movie out from Temple Grandin. Um, businessmen, they, they can excel in any area. Mm. Um, there's nothing holding them back. And then, I'm sorry that that's not very clear, but I just thought it's so good. What is so it's, good. it's not a processing error, it's a different operating system. Mm. They operate differently. It's not that there's something wrong. No. Final thoughts. I've uh, already said that, but I think it's just so important to take it home with you. If you have met one person with autism, you have met one person with autism. <laughs> They're all so different. They're all so different. And we are all somewhere on the spectrum. Um, those are the websites and the books I used, but there is a whole lot of information out there if you um, are interested in Google searching it, it it can keep you busy for days <laughs> decades De <laughs> <laughs> Back sheets, toolkits, it's all there mm. it's all there mm. all right so any final questions maybe well hopefully that was informative, yeah, and uh, I certainly enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, thank you very much. much. Yeah, thank you. How long time it has been in our society that autism? Um, the word.